Your goal as a crypto trader is to get to one Bitcoin. That's a tall order. Let me just back up. Your goal as a crypto trader is to make money. Yeah, that sounds better. But most of you struggle just with the second part, if not the first part. But why is everyone so obsessed with getting to one BTC? Well, here's why. Bitcoin is a scarce asset and there's not going to be any more of it made ever. Now, before you get really overwhelmed with all the information I'm going to share with you, understand that everything I'm sharing in this video has already been shared before in the Better Traders Club Discord server. I post tons of updates, tons of news, tons of market analysis, charts, and thoughts on the market as well as trade setups, but everything I'm sharing with you right now, watch it over and over again if it's not sinking in the first time. If anything, you want to save this video and watch it in three months time because you'll be amazed at how accurate this is. I'll see you there. So you're back. I'm going to do something that I usually don't do ever in my videos, and that's giving you access to see what my posts look like in the Better Traders Club Discord server. So I'm going to be reading through my notes from a post that I made back in August 21st. And I want you to understand the importance, the gravity of this, as well as the fact that this is how you get to one BTC. Some of you are just starting out with a little amount of money. Some of you already have a ton of money. You're like, I already have one or two or five Bitcoin. Good for you. This is a video for people that are looking to accumulate their Bitcoin stack. And it gets increasingly harder every four years because of the Bitcoin having. So let's go ahead and get started with Discord. On August 21st, I shared this chart. And this right here was enough to start the snowball effect for me. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, Bitcoin dominance is going to be somewhere else. There's also a chance that it can continue to go up higher. But the reality is that the TBO, the trending breakout indicator, an indicator I've been using since 2018, is a ridiculously accurate trend trading indicator. And yes, trend trading means a lot to me. As you can see, that book right behind me, trend trading, this is one of the keys on how you're going to get to one Bitcoin, but we're going to get there later. This chart was enough to get me triggered to post this on Discord and share it with everyone in the Better Traders Club Discord. And the keyword here is cracks of weakness. Whenever the price of an asset pierces or goes inside of this green area right here, or red, it's a sign of potential volatility and consolidation to come. Volatility, that's an easy word to understand. It's just price going up and down. Like that's crypto. That's pretty much Tuesday on crypto. When I'm talking about consolidation, I mean, when the price is going ping pong, ping pong, back and forth on the chart. And when we see the price go inside of the TBO cloud, we can expect more volatility and more consolidation to come. Keep that in mind. The other reason why why I'm focusing on Bitcoin dominance so much in this video is because Bitcoin dominance determines the health and the well-being of the altcoin market. There is also a very strong relationship between Bitcoin dominance and stablecoin dominance. I don't know why I'm using a one and a zero, but these two things play into us having a very successful trading career. If Bitcoin dominance is on the rise, there's a good chance that we're going to be struggling with our BTC pairs. We're going to be struggling trading against Bitcoin. Bitcoin. However, when Bitcoin dominance is falling, that is typically the best time to be trading against Bitcoin and also trading alts, which will therefore increase our BTC stack. Keep holding on to these nuggets. I'm giving you lots of gems as I'm explaining this post. and We haven't even gone to the next part of it. As I said, the daily TBO cloud was pierced, which is a sign of future weakness for any chart, whether it's Bitcoin dominance, Bitcoin, Ethereum, the S&P, the Dixie, gold, it doesn't matter. Whenever you see the price go inside after being bullish and it goes inside the cloud, that is a sign of future weakness for any chart. One thing that we have to keep in mind with this is that this line on the very bottom, this is called the TBO slow line. The slow line is the macro trend for any chart. And when the price has been above the trend, it's been above the cloud for such a long time, eventually what will happen is that slow line will start to angle up more and more and more. Think of it like a super duper heavy airplane, right? You need a lot of energy and a lot of momentum to get that plane to actually lift up. But once it does, it's really hard to make it go right back down. Dear God, no, let's not that. Please don't be watching this video in an airport. That would be horrifying. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're going to watch this in three months. You're going to be fine. Your primary goal right now, right now, right now, now is to stack sats with BTC paired trades to accumulate more Bitcoin before October starts the fourth quarter 
bull run. This is critical information that you have to understand right now. Your goal as a crypto trader is to use altcoins to increase your Bitcoin stack. A lot of you have been duped into believing that XYZ coin and water coin and beer coin or whatever, some dog or cat or ape coin, these are going to always go up and to the right forever. They're not. The one coin that will be around five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now is Bitcoin. Like it or not, that is the God's honest truth. Your goal is to stack sats. Your goal is to increase your Bitcoin holdings with BTC pairs. So that means like FBTC, ADA BTC, XRP BTC, LTC BTC, Litecoin BTC. All of these BTC pairings can be extremely beneficial to help you grow your Bitcoin portfolio faster, but not all the time. There is a specific window of opportunity and we are soon leaving that window of opportunity because of what's going to be coming up next. As I said down here, the fourth quarter bull run. Typically, we see an increase in Bitcoin's price starting from late September to October, going October, November, December, the last three months of every single year. Usually, we see some sort of increase in Bitcoin's price performance. If we go over here to TradingView and we look at just Bitcoin alone, and I'm going to turn off all the indicators, I want you to pay attention to time frame. Now, this is very coincidental because October back here, 2023, this is when we had all of the hype surrounding the Bitcoin spot ETF, but lo and behold, it happened in October and we saw an incredible increase over the next three months of 67%. It continued to rally even more until the ETF launched. Now, I want to change that up because over here in a bear market, October 2022, the price of Bitcoin was starting to go up par for the course. However, there was a curveball that was thrown at us because of the FTX collapse and the price of Bitcoin dropped 19% from that value. Interestingly enough, from January 1st, 2023, we saw the price of Bitcoin increase significantly over the next four months. So the end of the year was off to a good start and then FTX crashed. Let's go back in time even more. So we're looking at October, November, December. So here we go. October 2021, we see a major impulse on October 2021, all the way up to the market top at 69K in 2021. You getting the pattern that's happening here? Now, this is the market top, and of course, everything falls after that. We are not in that situation whatsoever right now. I believe that Bitcoin is going to go up a lot higher over the course of the next year or so. Don't worry about where we are right now. Focus on this idea, this concept of October, November, December generally being a bullish time frame for Bitcoin. I am seeing more of my BTC paired trades starting to turn green because I am using my Bitcoin to trade alts. And this is advantageous because when I am trading with my Bitcoin and I'm buying charts and I'm buying coins, entering positions, however you want to say it, and I make a profit on that, I'm able to grow my BTC earnings. But like I said before, there is a very, very narrow time frame. This is why this video is time sensitive, okay? This is the part where you have to pay attention to right here. This range from about May all the way to September and then October up until January 1st, 2021. Notice what's happening here for Bitcoin dominance. And to show this better to you, I actually want to show you TradingView. What happened in May 2020 was we saw a decrease in Bitcoin dominance. When we see Bitcoin dominance falling. This is bullish for BTC pairs. Vice versa, when we see Bitcoin dominance increasing and growing significantly, this is extremely bearish for BTC pairs. And again, the whole premise of the video is how do you get to one Bitcoin? We're using BTC, our own Bitcoin holdings, to buy alts in hopes that those alts will outperform Bitcoin. Therefore, we're earning a profit in BTC. But there's a time frame that works best. When Bitcoin dominance is falling, that's a great time to be trading against Bitcoin. When it's increasing, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to do that. There are some symbols that will flash with the TBO indicator that will let us know, ah, we're getting close to the top of a range because of this red dotted line right here. This is TBO resistance. While Bitcoin dominance did exceed that, by 7%. That was pretty much the top because look at dominance. It topped out at 73% after chopping sideways and going up and going up and going up. And then finally, it couldn't take any more. And then what happened next was the great 
amazing altcoin rally that we saw. We saw a major alt season from January 2021 all the way until about May. Actually, May was when we saw the start of the crypto crash or the crypto bear market summer. But during this period where we saw Bitcoin dominance sell off a lot, this is when it was the easiest time to use our Bitcoin to buy alts to increase our Bitcoin holdings. This moment right in here, this was like shooting fish in a barrel. Sorry, Peter, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. So why is it so valuable that we're focusing on BTC pairs? Because most of you have been focusing on altcoins to grow your stablecoin stack, but the reality is that your stablecoins, it's not gonna grow. It's not going to naturally mature in value over time. If anything, it's actually going to devalue you. It's going to lose its value over time because of inflation. Many of you are here because you've recognized the signs of inflation. You've recognized the fact that the Fed keeps printing dollars. So that means the value of the dollar keeps going down. So it doesn't make sense to buy and hold all coins so that way we're just making profit in stable coins if we're not converting those profits into Bitcoin. This is why I think it's more important, more valuable for the long term to grow and increase your portfolio, specifically focusing on Bitcoin for the long term. As Bitcoin dominance dropped about 17%, dominance shifted to stable coins because of the fear surrounding the COVID crash from March 2020 that had a major impact on the market. But despite the bearish conditions, trading against Bitcoin with BTC pairs was the right move. Notice the time frame here. This is post COVID crash. Even though it was brutal after the COVID crash, it was still difficult. And there was a long period of sideways chop in which stablecoin dominance was moving up as well because there was fear in the market. Here's roughly the same date range, but focusing on Bitcoin's price action. This is no longer Bitcoin dominance. This is just Bitcoin. So from mid-May or so, 2020, all the way until the end of September, the price of Bitcoin only moved up a measly 40%. This period right in here was grueling for all of you that were trading back in this time. Having Bitcoin make these little 1% up and down moves every single day, this type of chop, it was just unheard of. Well, not necessarily. Let me show you exactly on the chart. We've actually seen chop like this before, but many of you haven't been around long enough to see it. I need to go back all the way over here to 2020. This period was awful. It was god awful. Moving up 40% and then coming back down. But this range right here was the worst. Now, what I want you to recognize right here is that volatility dramatically starts calming down a lot where we have this range that was initially our low down here to 8,000 and our high up here to 10,000. That's a pretty big move of 28%. But what happens over time is that as price is still indecisive, we start getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter till we have daily candles that are embarrassing, closing 0.25% in a day, closing 0.24% closing down 0.55%. This area right here, a lot of people got chewed out and chopped up and they missed out on the big impulse that happened, not to mention the major bull run that happened next. But like I said, that's not the first time we've seen that happen. A lot of you weren't trading back in here, but I remember trading back in 2019 after we saw the major crash from 6K that everyone said it's never gonna happen and boy oh boy did it happen. But notice what happens. We have a major move, lots of volatility, and then the volatility starts to constrict and get really, really tight and nothing until finally pop, until finally pop. So I'm saying this because depending on when you're watching this, we've had many days where it's very, very boring price action for BTC. Days where we're seeing what negative 6.8% plus 0.58%, all of this awful price action right here, all this chop, it's chopping out the weak hands. So the explosive move that happened for Bitcoin, it's an increase of about 3 100% for Bitcoin. I don't expect the same increase to happen at the end of this year, but I do expect a rally to happen at the end of this year. Again, Bitcoin chopped in a super tight range for basically all of May, June, and July back in 2020. It was miserable holding Bitcoin. The chop was painful for holding alts as well. But the truth is that lots of BTC paired mid to low caps, they pumped while Bitcoin remained sideways. I want to say that again. The truth is that lots of BTC paired mid to low cap alts, all of them pumped while Bitcoin remained sideways. Well, not all of them. I should say lots of them did. This is part of the strategy to get to that one BTC. When Bitcoin is getting into this really, really, really tight and 
and constricted range, that's typically where we're going to see alts popping. Because what happens is the market is very efficient. And when Bitcoin is boring, market participants are going to take their Bitcoin and they're going to be buying other things. And all it takes is one buyer with a big enough bag to start the first pump. And then all of a sudden, all the eyes are looking at that chart and they're going, I'm going to get in on this too. And we start buying, buying, buying. And then all of a sudden, before we know it, we have a rally happening while Bitcoin is just doing nothing. So as the price, the value of these altcoins start to go up higher, you better believe that the BTC pair of that is going to be increasing a lot. It's not going to be the exact same amount as the USDT pairing will. But the important thing to focus on is that the fact that we can use the moments where Bitcoin is chopping and consolidating at a really tight range so that we can make more BTC before the explosive move that will come. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself in my notes, but I mean, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Coming back to Bitcoin Dominance's chart, it's crucial to note how Bitcoin Dominance's increase of nearly 28% over three months absolutely destroyed many BTC pairs over that same amount of time. The reason for this is simple. In the same example I gave, if Bitcoin is in a very tight range and it's staying sideways, that is a gift, especially when one alt will decide to take off. But if Bitcoin is taking off, most charts, most alts cannot and will not keep up with Bitcoin. Some might stay at parity, but it's very rare for charts to do that. The reality is that a lot of those coins will not be able to keep up with the price action of Bitcoin. There's not enough attention on those alts, but they'll have their time later. And again, this is how we do this. Okay. So when Bitcoin goes parabolic, nothing can keep up with its intensity or energy. I shouldn't say nothing, absolutely nothing, but 98% of all alts won't be able to keep up. And if alts are struggling to keep up with the price of Bitcoin moving up parabolically, you have to believe me when I say that their BTC pairings are going to suffer even more. This is so important. Pay attention, get out a whiteboard marker, write on your monitor if you need to. Don't do that. It's probably a bad idea, but write somewhere where you can see it. You need to remember this. This is why it is extremely important to close out of all of your BTC paired trades over the next four to six weeks before Bitcoin has a bullish move moving up higher later this year. We have a small window of opportunity right now to close out our BTC paired trades before Bitcoin goes parabolic. I'll show you some charts in a second. I'm 100% serious on this. They won't be able to keep up. Therefore, they're going to lose value. And especially if it's a low cap or a mid cap altcoin that's not really well known and it's really volatile, you better believe that people are going to be selling that off to go back to Bitcoin while Bitcoin is strong. This happens all the time and it's happened over and over and over. Here's six charts that are going to prove my point. Pay attention because you're going to recognize a lot of these tickers. These are very popular and well-known charts. XRP from October 2020 to December 2020, it moved up 239%. It seems great. Wait, but I just shared a chart with you back over here. Bitcoin actually moved up in that same period over 300%. So if Bitcoin moved up 300%, but XRP only moved up 239% and actually it fell, hold on a second. There's a reason why I'm showing you this. This is just one. Now look here, Dogecoin. There was a narrative around Dogecoin. Remember before I said that there will be some coins that will do better than Bitcoin. Dogecoin is one of them because there was a massive narrative around Dogecoin. And if you want to know more about this, I talk about this in my video where I'm explaining exactly how to get rich in the 2024 bull run. And I talk about the importance of narratives and I give you even an ideal portfolio allocation. And I include meme coins in this because that's exactly what Dogecoin is. But when there's a strong narrative, we will see coins outperform what Bitcoin is doing. But no, this is the daily chart right here. See this candle right here, the last one, January 31st probably it moved up from about 600 all the way it doubled in a day basically moved at 100 percent in one day for the most part though it did not keep up with bitcoin's price action from october to november to december it even had to pull back only in the last bit did it really shoot up cardano ada same time frame october 2020 to january 2021 it only moved up 280 percent how much did Bitcoin move up again? I just want to remind you again, because I remember, but I want you to see it. 311%. That means that it's actually not worth holding Cardano or Doge or XRP. It was actually more beneficial to hold BTC. So much more steady, so much more gradual compared to this and this and this. 
There's another one, Chainlink. This was a darling of the crypto space back in 2019, where we saw Chainlink at under a dollar and it moved all the way up to $20. It was an incredible move. But October 2020 to January 1st, 2021, it only moved up 92%. This is awful. If you use Bitcoin to buy Link, during this period, you would be hurting a lot. You would be really frustrated and annoyed because the value of your trade is going down because the price of Link is not keeping up with the price of Bitcoin. Therefore, the amount of Bitcoin that you originally paid for Link is going to look red. It's going to show a negative balance because it's losing value against Bitcoin that's super duper strong. Litecoin, this is one of the weirdest charts in the world. I still don't understand the purpose of Litecoin. Good job, everybody. This one is the only one that is almost near tandem with what Bitcoin was doing. Wow. That's incredible. I don't care still. I'm not going to buy Litecoin. Stellar XLM. We got October, nothing happening. October and November. And then suddenly we get this mega spike. Late November, price drags down. We get another mega spike. Not easy to trade this at all. Not easy to hold it. During the same time frame as Bitcoin moving up 311%, it does move up 480%. This is just one out of six, though. Most charts aren't going to be able to keep up with Bitcoin's parabola, with Bitcoin's strength. It's just how crypto works. Pretty much all of them had similar performance compared to Bitcoin. Of course, some will outperform like XLM and Doge. Some will grossly underperform like Link and XRP. But the main thing to be aware of is that most alts just barely catch up to Bitcoin's parabolic rise. This is incredibly important. I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. The goal is to get to one Bitcoin. I've shown you so far, Bitcoin dominance is king. And we're going to look at the chart for Bitcoin dominance coming up soon. But I want you to understand and keep that in mind. Where the real price action happened was from January 1st. And the two to three months that followed were epic for alts. Looking at the same charts, Stellar, January 1st, 2021, it moved up 531%. Keep in mind, over the same period of time, Bitcoin moved up maybe 60 or 70% and then the market crashed. There's just one. Litecoin moved up 227%. Chainlink moved up 371%. Cardano moved up 1,304%. Dogecoin moved up an incredible jaw-dropping 15,739%. Now note, this is three months after Bitcoin has its big move. So what happened to Bitcoin's price action during this time? Well, Bitcoin calmed down. It moved up a lot and then it had a couple of hiccups, but it was mostly just kind of chilling out and staying stable. That was the moment where we saw Bitcoin dominance fall. We go back to the chart for Bitcoin dominance. When did alts fly? Alts flew when Bitcoin dominance topped out here, January, all the way down here to May. And it was falling and falling and falling. This was easy pickings to grow your BTC stack. I want you to keep that in mind. It is vital that you understand this. There is a time to trade against BTC, but we need to be very careful about when we do this, okay? When we look at newly listed charts that have no prior price action during that same period, absolutely explode. Avalanche, which was a new chart back here in, what is this, September 2020. It pumps, listing pump, that's normal. And then we see in that same time frame, January 2021, all the way up to February, it moves up almost 1900%. It pulls a 19x. In a matter of one month, what, five weeks? That's insane. Solana, newly listed in late August, mid-August, from January 1st, 2021, all the way until the end of May, it shoots up and does a 37x, 3,748%. Matic mooned 15 thousand percent 150x you would only have to put in like 0.01 btc to walk away with a bitcoin when you get out of that trade easier said than done and that's where trend trading and the tbo come into play but there are going to be charts that are going to go absolutely bananas and everyone's going to think well that's as high as it can go nope it's not it's going to keep going and it's going to keep going and it's going to keep going so what does all this mean how does this relate to where we are right now there will be a time when alts will grossly outperform bitcoin and this is typically after bitcoin has already had its parabolic rise usually the first quarter after a bullish fourth quarter 
too. We want to maximize our profits in Bitcoin during Bitcoin's parabolic phase that I personally expect is going to happen the fourth quarter of this year, which means that we should avoid having BTC paired trades open during this parabolic rise. We want to be heavy on Bitcoin and our long-term alt positions. I believe that the next four to six weeks will be our last chance to profitably trade Bitcoin pairs for a while. I am personally focusing on closing out as many of my BTC pairs as I can quickly as possible. So I'll have a larger allocation of Bitcoin. So I have my profits in Bitcoin. I can sit and enjoy the ride that we're going to have for BTC. So again, the keys here, how do you get to one Bitcoin? It's all about timing. We are in this little area of time right now, little window of time that we can grow our BTC, but we want to be careful not to be overexposed in Bitcoin when Bitcoin goes parabolic later this year. After Bitcoin goes parabolic and will start to get a little bit quiet, a little bit boring, that's where we're going to see alts really take off. And I expect that to happen January, February, March. I want to address some of the questions that I can already imagine that you have. You've been listening to me talk and I'm going to read your mind and this is going to help you out so much. So pay attention here, okay? What about using my Bitcoin to trade alts once things go crazy for alts in quarter one, 2025? Yes, by all means, go ahead and use your Bitcoin to trade alt charts once we have a very bullish quarter one. But we want to be careful that we are not overexposed to BTC pairs during Bitcoin's parabolic rise. But after that rise is done, Oh yeah, we're going to use our BTC. Like you saw that chart for Matic going up 15,000%. We're going to be able to use our Bitcoin and just expand and grow our Bitcoin holding. You will be able to get to one Bitcoin, but it matters when you're doing it. Here's another question. What about my long-term positions and swing trades? Won't those experience drawdown compared to Bitcoin until quarter one, 2025? Well, the honest answer is that there's really no way to know which coins or which charts are going to outperform or underperform against Bitcoin while Bitcoin is parabolic. So if you have a really good entry in a chart or if you have conviction, I think it's easier to hold that position and wait for its moment in the sun, but it will most likely happen in the first quarter of 2025. So you can hold on to those positions, but understand that it might take some time and you might see some drawdown. There's another question. What about bot trading during quarter four? 2024. Is that a good idea? DCA bots are honestly a great idea during the phase of this market because we can capitalize on negative price action on pullbacks while accumulating more of the tokens we like. But we want to be careful not to use DCA bots with BTC pairs. I cannot say it enough. I cannot emphasize it enough. Yes, you could run a DCA bot for AVAX USDT or TON USDT or XMR USDT, a Litecoin, whatever, but avoid at all costs BTC pairs. Don't do Litecoin BTC or ton BTC. Stay away from those. So DC bots work great to accumulate coins. But the key emphasis here is accumulating coins. Do not run a DCA bot and just take profit in the stable coin currency, USDT or USDC or USD. It's not going to grow your account. Another question. Will it be better to use DCA bots or use active trading strategies when we hit quarter one, 2025? This is a good question because I love bot trading and DCA bot trading is something near and dear to my heart, something I have a lot of experience in and I have a lot of enjoyment doing. But in my experience, it's actually easier to focus on active trading strategies like using all trades smart trade for lack of a better term but using the trading terminal using smart trade ideas so it's a lot easier during this phase of the market now you do not want to have a bot running as prices shoot up 5x 10x 50x 100x because you do not want to be left holding the bag way up high it's way easier to enter a position use split targets take profit at 50 percent take profit at 200, take profit at 500, whatever. But it's way easier to do that and to buy the dip on the way up higher. Just trust me, again, years of experience speaking right here. It's another question. What about running the better crypto signals? Now, some of you might not be aware, but I have a video that's talking about the better crypto signals. And essentially, these are 100% hands-free signals that are designed to swallow up and eat up all of the crazy volatility that we see in the crypto market. They're prepared to handle enormous amounts of drawdown. The way that they work is that they inch in, they DCA into positions. So while they are designed to handle massive drawdown, they're not going to be the best choice because we want to focus on 
different portfolio allocation holding positions so that way we can maximize our profits for our crypto portfolio. Whereas the better crypto signals are great, probably when we hit like a max top for our market, then we turn it on because all the volatility that will come with all the negative price action is going to help us to grow our account and our portfolio. We're actually going to do a lot better than most people holding way at the top by using DCA bots. So while I think that they're good for accumulating, you wanna be careful that you're accumulating the base currency, but understand that taking profit in the stable coin currency is not gonna help grow your account and definitely not gonna help you get to one Bitcoin fast, okay? So to wrap this video up, I want you to understand, again, the importance of keeping your eyes on Bitcoin dominance, helping you to see the importance of watching the chart and looking for the signs. Now, to be honest, I'm sharing updates five days a week in the Better Traders Club Discord server. I have special private videos that I don't share anywhere else, just with our members to give you guys, well, members, an update on where the market is, where I think things are gonna be going. Plus, I have tons of resources and tools and indicators to help give a projection of where I think crypto and Bitcoin is headed over the next three, six, nine, and even 12 months. So hold on tight to your convictions. Be careful when Bitcoin is parabolic and definitely maximize your portfolio by using BTC pairs when alts are raging and rallying in the next alt season. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.